The Build Show is on the road today. I'm on the coast of New England, and I'm about to show you the prettiest barn that I have ever seen. Today's Build Show from New England. Let's get going. All right, guys, I've got an amazing tour for you today. We're going to be checking out this gorgeous barn behind me. Now, the architect on this project is Steve Basic, one of my old friends, and I've also got the main builder carpenter here as well, Brian from How Custom Builders. Brian, good to see you. Beautiful project, Steve. Always a pleasure, buddy. Dang, man, this is Always incredible. Look at the wood in here, guys. Welcome to the barn. So, what are we looking at, Steve? What is this? So this is a storage barn, not your average storage barn here, but it's a wooden moment frame structure. You can see it's made up of five vents here. The, uh, the, the reason it's a moment frame is, is it gives us all of that free area as we don't have any lateral ties across here. So the lateral tie of the system is actually happening in the slab. So what we have here is we have these vents here, but what happens is, is they want to rotate out on this hinge point. So to stabilize that, we have grade beams that run across at the bottom of these columns that tie it together. So that resists any overturning. So then you're just left with basically this rigid moment frame structure that stands up. Got it, because normally when you're seeing moment frame, we're talking steel construction, right, Steve? Yeah, most, most of the time you see it, and we wanted to go for the wood just because of the location, and the homeowners wanted that New England vibe of having the wood inside. So this was all custom cut up in Canada. It was pre-assembled there and checked and then disassembled and reassembled down here by Brian and his crew. All right, Brian, so I'm seeing from your ridge and coming down to these giant rafters, I guess is the best thing you can call them, and down to these columns, I'm seeing a bunch of holes up there. What's going on with that? Well, Matt, to make this a, a rigid moment frame, normally wood has usually nuts or bolts and it kind of a wiggly, a wiggly joint. Inside of that big glue lamb there is a half inch thick piece of plate steel on this lower elbow that's almost eight feet across. Ah. And there are holes drilled in that and there are holes drilled through the big glue lambs with a CNC machine. And there are three quarter inch by 10 inch steel pins that are all hand driven through there. We have 1290 uh, drift pins that are driven through wow. uh, to make this a rigid connection. So there's steel in that's hidden inside of all these uh, joints to keep Same. them rigid. And then we also dropped in our prefabricated uh, infill walls that are uh, that are rough sawn spruce boards and native eastern white pine two by sixes. Okay, so these walls are not holding up any structure no. that's the infill like a typical stick framed correct uh, platform frame house. And what is this rough sawn lumber that I'm seeing? That's uh, that's spruce. That's eastern spruce. Okay, and so rough sawn eastern spruce. You don't find that at the lumber yard, do you? No, with fewer lumber, uh, Atkinson, New Hampshire supplied all of our rough sawn stock, okay. and um, they do a really nice job. And and then behind that, you've got uh, I don't know what is that? Some one by material? What are we looking at? Yeah, that's a one by ten. Okay, uh, eastern white pine. Eastern White Pine, rough right. sawn as well. Rough sawn as well. So, that's so it kind of gives the look of an old barn, really. Correct, correct. And is that your shear wall? That is not. Outside of that is the red zip panel. Ah. And that's nailed to the lateral blocking. And then tell me about your foundation here. What do, what do we... Uh... Okay. The foundation had a step in it for the this foam EPS running across there and up the wall. Okay. And that we used some of our nail base or cover board that mm -hmm. goes outside the red zip. That's our insulation for the house. Oh, okay. The barn. Um, Which is what, what type of insulation? It's number nine EPS with okay. uh, half inch OSB outside it. Outside of that, typically you might use that on a flat roof, uh, like a metal roof, screw it down and put down an EDPM membrane. Yep. We use this in a vertical application to give us a continuous insulation. Uh, layer on the outside. Yep. I use some of that on the inside here. You give me a little um, PVC trim on the bottom in case they wanted to epoxy the floor or something. Yep. Gives us a water so that it insulates the bottom there. You can see a elastometric caulking here because there was foam all the way around the bottom here and that's down just a little bit. So the slab is thermally isolated from the foundation all the way around. Got it. So you basically have a perfect wall project here, right? Where 
you've got full continuous insulation on the outside, Steve. And tell me about the roof line then. So the, the roof line is a SIPS panel that we had custom cut on the center lines of the bents. That we have 16 foot panels and we obviously built in the overhangs there and then we came up with a nice detail to finish out all of the eave work and rake work on the outside of that. But we have a nice, what is it, eight inch panel, I believe, on the outside of that. Right. Um, insulating this so one of one of the things to also keep in mind about this project is that you know it, it is fully insulated it is continuous under slab etc like I always like to build these are slightly lower um, measurements for the insulation and our values here but understand a little later in the video we're gonna go outside and show you where the heating plant comes for ah. and it's all for free How about that? so cool so what's underneath our feet then? Is there, uh, is there anything interesting underneath the concrete here on the slab? Well, it's a full radiant heated slab. It's oh. thermally broken at each of the doors. Okay. You know, we have the, the little mini set of doors here. These are only 12 footers. So the idea is that we can bring in, the, these doors are sized to bring in the larger boats. Yep. yep. And so we can bring them in, disconnect the trailer and then drive the pickup truck outside through the little oh, doors God. or bring in little stuff there. So we That's had that really second smart. set of doors. So it's basically a drive through garage. And all of your floor you is radiant. So it's going to be the floor beautiful is radiant. heat in here. It's, it's beautiful. You can see we have four mini splits on the wall uh, that the homeowners once once we started building this barn, it came to the realization that this is slightly more than just your average storage barn. So it's slowly <laughs> migrated into, there's potential to have some pretty cool parties here yes. in the summer, have some cool activities. So we have the cooling system in there. It's mm -hmm. an all electric barn um, from, the, from the heating or cooling perspective. Mm -hmm. And again, all our electricity is free here. All right, guys, we're up on the hill above the barn and we've got a great view of the roof now. Steve, give us a little bit of a tour of what's going on on the uh, roof and the exterior here. Yeah, so you can see that our heating electrical plant here is actually divided into two groups. On the right, we have solar PV panels. Okay. We have 40 panels there. They're 325 watts each. It gives us a 13.0 um, kW PV system. I think it generates like 16,000 kilowatt hours a year or something. Yeah, this but has to be a net zero. It's right? a net zero project and actually we're going to pipe some of the electricity up the hill to we're doing a pool house and a house up there so when this isn't using the electricity we'll be able to use it up there on the other structures on the site and but the 13 kw pretty much maxed out all the incentives for pv so then we moved on to a solar hot water system so here you can see the heating plant for all of our radiant floor system domestic hot water inside potable water all of that gets heated here on these nine panels. And so. what percentage of the heat do you think will you get for this building just from this in the say winter time, Steve? I mean, I think it's even, even you know, in the winter time that this is a self-sustaining building that we're not buying any supplemental heat energy. We're, we're actually exporting energy from the roof of this barn to the pool house or to the residents in the future. Beautiful. So in effect, Steve, we've got a, uh, you've got a net zero uh, party barn, storage barn, boat workshop with free heat and cooling and free electricity for all the other services. Is so that right? I call it a broad spectrum program for this building, meaning that it's everything from a storage facility to a real working barn. We have a walk-in cooler. We have an industrial sink there to wash vegetables and stuff from the barn. Um, it, it has the storage capacity, but you can evacuate all the stuff inside here and throw one hell of a barn party too. Man, could you ever. So, now what's up with the wall panels I'm seeing in here, Steve? So the wall panels here, um, you know, future videos are gonna tell the whole story, but we have about 320 linear feet of two by eight, 24 inch on center framed wall panels. They're sheathed in a half inch Advantec mm -hmm. and then covered with Sega's 500 self-adhered MyVest. Wow weather barrier these are all the wall panels that brian has pre-manufactured for the house that we're going to be building here in the upcoming months just up the road here got it man that's cool hey brian will you give me a uh, little bit of a tour sure. of the uh, back services area here sure walk-in cooler ah the cool bot walk-in cooler cool bot out of denver and uh oh, man, it comes cool. as a comes as a kit it all 
you give them the dimensions, they give you the stuff, it all twist locks together, gasketed materials. Um, it's just a room air conditioner that has yeah, that been... It looks like just a standard LG is. Uh, window it rattler. Is. You can it? buy that at your local big box store. It's good for about mm, 800 square feet of living area. Now, and how is this a refrigerator, though, when you've got a standard air conditioner? Those are only going to get you down to, what, 65 degrees, correct. 60 degrees? This, this air conditioner thinks it's 60. This is a heating element supplied by the cool bot and taped in here. And there's a little heating coil here. So the air conditioner thinks it needs to be 60, but it's not because the air conditioner is being fooled by this cool bot. The actual temperature in here right now, because the door is open, is 43 degrees. Check that out. And wow. It works really well. That and is cool, man. I've never seen anything like that. So just a standard. Standard stainless steel, four inches of foam all the way around, um, food grade gasketed and came in a big kit and a big truck that is pretty cool it is really cool that's really cool and then what's the other uh, pod over here so to speak uh, is this a uh, kitchen over here or what it's a little kitchen area sort of it's, um, a 10 foot stainless steel commercial wow. sink Check three bowl sink a little rolling cart hasn't yeah. been all cleaned up yet but, you're set um, for the caterers when yeah. you have a party in here that's for sure double, double faucets spray arms and uh, we're ready to go. I love it. Now, now I'm wondering what's up on the loft though, Brian. Can we walk up there and have, sure. have maybe, a look? Maybe a bit of a height, but sure. Yeah, we're up in the loft, and uh, this looks like a pretty sweet little spot to see what's going on with the boat care down there. We can also see what's beyond us. You've got a beautiful field and a little retaining wall right here. An apple orchard in the back. Pretty nice little staging area too for this build, I bet. Oh my gosh, look how pretty your mechanicals are, Brian. Yeah, our plumbers are m &R Plumbing out of Wakefield, Mass, and they do phenomenal work. What is going on here? All right, these are the, the supplies and returns for the underfloor slab. This okay. is a heat exchanger that runs off the, the hot water system that's on the roof. This is one of the heat exchangers here that supplies the heat for the floor downstairs, this is the, the circulator for those. Okay, so you've got basically uh, glycol running in yes. here probably. Correct. We've got a big old panel of solar collectors in the roof. It's coming down here. And these are probably just storage tanks, right? There's no yes, heating going yes, on right. in here. The glycol is not in this this tank. The glycol runs almost, like a loop. Hot wa almost a hot water heater in reverse. And this is actually domestic potable water. It's, this water comes from the well system comes through here, is heated, and then goes into the domestic hot water tank ah, okay. as supplemental hot water. There is an element of electric element there in case we need a little more heat. So you've got here. 240 gallons here collecting right. and just hanging out, and then it can send it over here to this, what, 40, 40 gallon tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All HTP products, by the way, these guys make a nice unit. All stainless tanks, I understand, and HTP. Man, this is incredible. Let's walk back downstairs, guys. Uh. Hey, Matt, so as you can see, the entry point to this barn is these pair of doors. They measure eight foot wide, 16 foot tall. They're fully insulated and weather stripped. Um, the, the idea behind them was obviously to get very large items, large boats and stuff in here for storage. Um, you know, I, I crafted the idea of some windows inside here to match the rest of it, but the, the real brains behind the operation of these doors is Brian. I mean, it, to, to be able to work with somebody of his caliber of understanding as a carpenter, I mean, I, I understand that it's, it's a beautiful barn, but the beauty here is the team effort that's involved, right? Brian lost sleep over putting these barn doors together and getting to them to operate. And understand that each one of these doors measures about 800 pounds in weight. Wow. And any one of us can open them with fingers. That's amazing. Right? And, and I'll, I'll let Brian talk about the details because I certainly don't want to take the wind out of his sails because these are his babies. But, man, he did a beautiful job on these. Brian, impressive craftsmanship, Thank my you, friend. Man. Thank now, you I, very much, Steve. I, uh, I, I opened these earlier with just a, uh, just a finger, basically, and that's an 800-pound door. Now, when I first walked up, I thought, oh, are these rolling on some rollers on the bottom? Because you see there's kind of a track system here. But no, in fact, Brian will give us the uh, story. This pipe 
uh, is not actually on a track system. Nope. Steve, would you grab that sample real quick of the uh, of that bottom piece? And Brian, tell me how you fabricated these doors. The the core of the doors are LSL studs, you know, okay. an engineered stud that is a, a kind of a shiplap joint connection with my nine inch um, headlocks that I put together, and I wanted to have a four and a quarter inch thick door product. So these steel uprights from the Stanley National Hardware people, they make all sorts of barn door hardware. They made my tracks, my rollers. Ah. Um, so this is a steel outside support structure that uh, allows for a lot of lateral rigidity for mm -hmm. this door. Because you didn't want this thing bouncing around like a trampoline. Yep. So I, I had a, I have specific distances I wanted to have. So I took my LSLs, which are inch and a half, and then added a quarter inch of uh, plywood Lots of tight bond three glue, about three gallons for these doors. Wow. Stapled that in. They gave me an inch and three quarter layer um, that I ins used a couple of inch and a three quarter inch layer of poly iso. On the inside layer, it was a layer of half inch ABX marine plywood. On the outside was another layer of half inch ABX marine plywood. Covered the whole thing in blue skin. Uh, and on the inside was lifespan V joint pine. Lifespan's a 20 year warranty uh, treated pine. Mm -hmm. And up above is Alaskan yellow cedar uh, that we ship left ourselves. And I cut down some Marvin Integrity windows, uh, took out the hardware, locked them shut. So they match the rest of the windows in there. The tracks are the high strength steel tracks with this one has a triple trolley assembly. Who makes that steel track, Brian? The same people that make this stuff to Stanley National, Stanley Hardware. Okay, gotcha. And, uh, and tell me about the bottom that I mentioned earlier, because I think that's the so bottom, cool what the you did. Bottom, the biggest issue with barn doors is to keep the bottom together, keep them moving side to side. So what I use is a two by Epe, two by four, and use a really big router with my half inch uh, production router, and routed a two inch groove, and this is an inch and a half piece of uh, galvanized pipe that has an inch and seven eighths OD, and allows me to have a completely um, anchored guide rail all the way across so when, when it gets a little windy here on the Atlantic Ocean these doors don't flop around in the breeze. Love these doors Brian what a testament to your craftsmanship brother. Let's uh, let's take a tour of the outside guys shall we? Yeah. So Steve tell me about the siding that I'm seeing this looks like a, a beautiful New England cedar. So what is this? It isn't this is Boral this is one of their coved channels here or Dutch lap. Let's walk around the side because it's a little bright here. You know, this is their eight inch product. We're gonna be replicating this over at the house also and be using it over there. Um, you know, one of, one of the go-to places that I use for boral is there's Duration Millwork. Um, you can find them um, certainly on the web, but they'll cut boral and manufacture boral into any size shape that I can think of. And I've not used boral. Tell me about it. What is this product? So boral is, uh, it's a uh, like cementitious type board that just it takes paint exceptionally well it huh. cuts exceptionally well it's made with fly ash okay. so there's some recycled content in there um certainly and it just as you can see it takes paint exceptionally yeah, it, looks beautiful. it really does the How'd biggest you? advantage is it does not absorb water uh -huh. and it has an almost zero thermal coefficient of expansion so like some of your plastic products that expand mm -hmm. and contract a lot especially at darker colors mm -hmm. if this was a pvc product we'd have real problems with this this has almost no thermal expansion will not absorb water mm. so it doesn't have some of the cement fiber product issues where you have to have chairs and all that kind of stuff going yeah. on and uh, it holds paint like old asbestos siding some people some people in other parts of the country don't have the old housing stock like we have in, <laughs> in closer to Boston where houses are built in the turn of the century, last century ago, where they have like a styrated asbestos siding, which still looks good today. It holds paint, will never ever peel. <laughs> this stuff just is bomb proof when it comes to that kind of stuff. Interesting, all right. Well, I'm sure the marketing guys at 
Burrell probably wouldn't appreciate the asbestos siding uh, no, reference, so uh, they're not a sponsor. But it's FYI. in a good light. It's in a good light. <laughs> so, yeah, we're we're talking good. All right, guys. The other thing I want to just throw out there, Matt. You know, I'm going to piggyback my idea on this whole teamwork. You know, there's there's a handful of people at Howell Custom Building Group that are responsible for the success of this too. That work effortlessly. You know, behind the scenes, pulling it all together. It starts with Steve Howell, the owner of the company, who just has an exceptional mind set and kind of sets the stage for you know a job well done and his whole team and we're also working with the the color selection on the barn was done by Christina Creston with the client and she just won the HGTV interior designer of wow. the year award so I, I you know we got the A team out we here team we, out we're, we're we're doing some good stuff but yeah, that's we, good we all architect knowing you got a builder and an exactly, interior designer here that, as top notch everybody's asking the right questions and providing the right answer so awesome. it's and you can see the result for sure now guys as we're walking around the back tell me about the roof we've got a uh, a metal roof on there is that like the steel roofs that i'm using down in texas well this one is actually an aluminum standing seam roof just because of our proximity to the ocean um i think if we step back here we might be able to yeah we got some cloud cover maybe we can see it now get, get some uh get a shot of it okay but, there we go you know yeah. it's a beautiful little roof there obviously the standing seam also benefits us for our attachment of pv and the solar panels on the other side that you'll see but that's um, not steel, is it, Steve? No, that's an aluminum roof, again, because of our proximity. I mean, salt water is literally hundreds of yards away from us here. Yep, yep. So we get that salty uh, water air around here. And, and aluminum's uh, not going to rust on us. And, and Brian has a, an awesome little trick. I'll let him, you know, tell you about how he installed it. Hi, we Brian. Get, we, how you doing? We, we had issues with, um, when we installed the SIPS panels, on the roof, they were all done with headlock screws, lots and lots of them. But they were proud of the OSB on the SIPS panels and would create a real problem with dimpling on the aluminum if we tried to install directly on the OSB. Mm -hmm. And rather than trying to strap the roof or resheathe it with an entire another layer, we decided to use strips of neoprene rubber, inch, two and a half inches wide by three sixteenths of an inch thick. Ah. And we use those right underneath the clips as they nail down the clips for the, the Dutch seam on the, uh, on, the, on the standing seam roof. And really that's just the spacer, right? That's a spacer. It keeps the aluminum off the roof. It keeps it above the head of the headlock screw, okay. which is about an eighth of an inch thick. Now you t you told me a uh, a secret well, about this about the lack of styrations on here. Well, tell me about it, that. It's a long it's a long fairly long piece, and to help keep the roof from oil canning, we try to introduce a little bit of a camber into each panel, and with just some three quarter inch foam backer rod, and just a little bit of duct tape. My my. Uh, Roofing guy had a long table here. He'd flip the panel over. We had a big long spool. He'd roll it out, put a couple pieces of duct tape on the backside, and duct tape a piece of aluminum uh, foam backer rod right down the middle of each panel and install that. And it gives us just a little bit of a camber there um, to keep it, help keep it from oil canning and rippling. Genius. I love it. And yeah. as you look at the roof, I know it's a little hard to tell, guys, because the, uh, the sun we've got going here, but you can't tell. It looks really. Uh, looks pretty flat paneled and not like it's uh it's got anything now you can see on this flat panel though there there's not oil canning per se but it's not dead flat and that's no. what you need to know what you're getting right. uh on a roof like this that there's going to be a little bit of that all right so now we're on the back side of the building and now we can see our two uh uh mitsubishi hyperheat units these are the uh, city multis which means that he's got more than one free online uh going to these this is the back side of that walk-in cooler. That's pretty awesome. I love how economical that is, just using a standard unit. And uh, if I remember correctly, these hyperheats can get down to pretty low, like minus five and still be at full heating capacity and still at like 70 or 80% capacity down to minus 15. That's pretty awesome. Look at the uh, copper awning he's got or copper uh, flashing over that roof and then some beautiful copper uh, lights on the outside man this is incredible guys what a job you go up the stairs you can get a better view from the from the field yeah i'll lace in some photos of that but let's uh let's close out the video uh on this point hey steve tell me uh, just briefly about the house you got going on because you and i popped over there real quick yeah so just up the road here we've been blasting for i don't know about six weeks now and we probably have another week or two of blasting to go they're hauling all the big rocks down this is a 
you know 80 plus acre site that we're building three buildings on we have a pool house and a large residence up there near the water that we're going to be embarking on construction here within the month as soon as we get all the blasting done we're staging all of the waste blasted stone down here that will bring a rock crusher in and turn big rocks into little rocks and truck all that stone back up and use it as drainage stone around the foundation and all of that stuff so we're recycling everything here on site nothing's getting hauled off Dang. And um, tell me about the blasting that you got going on there too, because I'm not familiar with that. You're actually blasting some of this limestone out, right? Yeah, so we're, we're blasting that site up there. It's literally a mound of New England granite. And one of the problems that we have from a building perspective here is we had a limit on the height of the building. So we could only go so high. So to achieve what we wanted to do with the building meant that we had to embed it partly into the hill. Yeah. So we had to blast it out. Well, when the minute you start blasting, there's all kinds of restrictions. One, it's hard New England granite. Yeah. You're not you're not chipping at this. There, yeah. There'd be guys, no there'd be three excavators with a whole ram for a couple of years up there. This is, you know, billion year old stone right. that's been sitting there under pressure it's literally rock hard and even even the blasters they drilled hundreds of holes and we have to drill a minimum of four feet down because we have to use the weight of the stone to keep it from becoming missile launches uh, to the nearby So they're drilling property. four feet down, putting the, the caps in or the, the, uh, caps the dynamite, in. basically. Then we put that large rubber mat yeah, we saw that on top mat. up there okay. when, we, when we saw that to keep the, the thing just kind of so it bounces. And then literally. the excavator is pulling the, the rock that's he been broken up. Out pop it into, into, into uh, a truck. truck and haul it down to the staging area and we'll like i said we'll make all little stones out of the big stones ah, you're crushing and recycle it. it and yeah we'll have a rock crusher come in for a short oh bit gosh. of time and uh go to work down there steve the architecture the planning beautiful on this job if you guys don't know steve follow him on instagram he's got a great feed he's an amazing building science teacher and obviously an amazing designer as well and i'll put a link to his website if you're interested in hiring him and how custom building group the builders here man amazing job by brian the lead carpenter and also put scott who we didn't get to meet uh his feet on there too he's got a bunch of pictures from this job under construction if you're uh if you're looking for it guys follow me on twitter and instagram if you're not currently a subscriber hit that subscribe button below otherwise we'll see you next time on, on the, the build, build show, show.